Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another standard video. Let me tell my opponent good luck. They open with E4. I have the black pieces here playing in 1821. So I feel like I played a fair amount of Sicilian lately. Um, I could play something with my D pawn. You guys know I love my Scandinavian. But um, hmm. I don't want to think too much after E4 because I only have uh, a few seconds to think here. Let's play D6. We'll play a Pierce or Pierce. Okay, and then D4, we'll go Knight F6. Hope you're all doing well. I'm still feeling that uh, last standard game that I played. I'm, I'm still very much uh, thinking about that game and all the complications with it. If you have a spare hour, even a little bit less, because you could skip some of the analysis potentially. But if you have a spare hour, go check that, that game out, the last standard video, because it was, it was quite, quite the game. All right, I'll play bishop g7 here. So I'm playing it in the conventional way, being kettoing my bishop. I also play e5 quite a bit on move three, but I figured you guys might, might not want to see a queenless middle game if white decides to trade the, the queens off. Although I think black's doing all right in that position, and I played that many times. So we'll play it the conventional way by fianchettoing the bishop. Okay, bishop c4. So this, this square for the bishop is normal, but let's see if I can sneak in knight takes e4. I might very well go for a center fork trick. Not quite yet, though. We'll castle first. And we'll see what my opponent does. I've been feeling pretty good about my play lately. Um, I haven't played... I'd say too much competitive blitz or specifically matches against high rate of players. But I know you guys like that. So like that game against Kari Kari from the last standard video, they were like 2300 classical. I'm going to try to seek out more of those games and maybe even arrange some matches. I think that'd be really cool. Potentially get some dual commentaries going again. Those always take a little more time to arrange, but I think they're very much worth it from an entertainment and instructional standpoint. So. Maybe I can convince some fellow masters to play some uh, longer games. So nothing out of the ordinary so far. Yeah, I, I could have thought about knight takes e4 here a little bit, I suppose, but I think it's kind of premature to do the center fork trick there. Uh, there was bishop takes f7 in that position if I went for it, and I, I think I might have another bite at the apple here if white castles, which, which I would normally expect. White is thinking a little bit. Okay, plays bishop f4. So, yeah, I think this is a legitimate attempt here. Knight takes e4. The position of this bishop in some ways wants me, makes me want to try to take advantage of it in a unique way, like maybe uh, work up to e5 in some capacity. Like I could try bishop g4, knight, knight c6. Try to put some indirect pressure here, but I do think this is the most straightforward move. And again, I'm setting up setting up for the center fork trick, looking to play d5 thereafter and fork the two pieces. It's not going to be anything earth shattering, but I do get to break up the white center rather nicely. And also, if bishop takes f7, that would be a blunder because I take with a rook, and on knight takes e4, I scoop the bishop on f4. There is some question about this c7 pawn at the end if it's hanging after I play d5, but I don't, I don't see how white realistically takes it in time. So yeah, let's go for knight takes e4. I don't play a whole lot of Pierce. Uh, I do sometimes play d6 against d4, and occasionally against e4 like at higher levels, but it's not a mainstay in my repertoire. But uh, against d4, I think d6 is actually kind of a savvy move order. A lot of King's Indian players use it. They try to uh, move order white, avoid certain lines like the Samish, for instance. There is the e5 threat. Okay, so white takes, so let's go ahead and fork. Ah, now there is this move. I actually didn't consider this one. Bishop takes c7 directly. Could be interesting. Queen takes, bishop takes d5. I have queen a5 there, but then knight c3. I wonder um, how that... How that works out. Like visually, it looks like I have pretty good compensation there, but I definitely should have thought about that line. I did mention 
the bishop takes c7 thing, but didn't really think about it in this context. So that'll be interesting if white decides to go for it. I will have the two bishops there when this occurs. White's king is in the center, so maybe a la the last climbing the rating ladder video, I could try to capitalize on that fact. I'm thinking queen a5 check. Yeah, and white does go for it. Okay. So take here, queen a5 check, knight c3. And what then? Maybe knight c6, maybe queen b4. Probably a given I'm going to take this bishop, so just looking at any other alternative. Yeah, I mean, if I move my queen, there's bishop takes b8 at the very least, so let's go ahead and take. And on bishop takes d5, then I can consider how to handle this. I mean, there's also rook d8 I might look at. Probably still leaning towards queen a5. That does look like the correct move to me. This bishop's undefended. So queen a5, knight c3, rook d8, and then maybe knight c6, try to establish some initiative against this pawn. Thinking that might be the way to go because it's going to be tough for white to hold that d4 pawn. I might be able to win that pawn back pretty quickly, actually. But don't get me wrong. I should have calculated this line with bishop takes c7. I don't like that I'm having to back into this variation and assess this after the fact, like basically be forced to sacrifice a pawn. So I was a little inattentive there. But yeah, let's give the check. And assuming knight c3 is played, I think I will play rook d8, which threatens to take. Even if white were to castle, I'm happy to get the two minor pieces for the rook. Any other moves here of note? I mean, there's knight c6, queen b4. I think I'm liking this rook d8 move. It looks like the most direct to me. Yeah, liking the look of that. Let's play it. Try to make white think a little bit too. Plenty of time for both sides, but I feel like I need to capitalize on the coming moves here to justify the pawn that I'm down. So if I can force white to start burning some of their time, that'd be great. Not really worried about bishop f7. Take, there's not even knight g5 because my queen will be guarding there. So don't think I have much to be concerned about in that regard. And my basic purpose premise here of playing rook d8 is if bishop c4 or bishop b3, I have knight c6, and I think it's going to be tough for white to guard d4. d5 allows bishop takes c3, and I'm scooping on c3 at the end. Bishop e4 could be a little more challenging. Bishop e4, I will have to think how best to handle that. Because knight c6 is still possible, but white has bishop takes c6 there. And I'm not hugely opposed to playing that position, because I have the two bishops, a lot of open lines to work with. White has to burn a move castling. But that would be a full-on pawn sacrifice at that stage. Not a whole lot of other moves to consider here. I mean, I think white... Does have to move the light square bishop. So I think you're just deciding between these three moves. No other move really makes sense here for white. So let's look at bishop e4, because I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do against these two moves. It's going to be knight c6. So bishop e4. Maybe e5 is a good move there. Bishop e4, e5. Idea if d5 to play f5, bishop d3, and then e4. Winning material. I could also try to go f5 right away, but then bishop d3, I don't like that I've weakened my king and I haven't played e5 yet. I'd rather play e5 when there's a pure pin going on. So bishop e4, e5, let's say castles. I take d4, knight back to e2. That position looks fine for me. I've won my pawn back there. I could play queen b6 to hold d4. I do have an isolated pawn on d4, but I think with a bishop pair to compensate, that should be completely fine. 
Let's try to brainstorm another line. Bishop e4. I could try to do something. Again, just like that last climbing the rating ladder. Queen a6, trying to stop castling. Queen e2. Looks like we could have some trade there, like queen takes e2, king takes e2, bishop takes d4. Might fizzle. Not liking that line as much. Okay, white plays bishop b3. So we instantly stop thinking about this move. It's irrelevant now. So knight c6 is probably going to be the move. Yeah, and I like that my queen's patrolling here, much like a Scandinavian. You guys didn't think the Scandinavian was completely off the table, right? <laughs> Even though I played d6 on move one. Still some Scandi ideas from the queen a5 variation. Now, I could also play e5. I should think about that. Similar ideas, like if d5, there's e4. But e5, I don't know about. There is knight g5 in reply, which is possible because I'd be obstructing my queen's view of the g5 square. So this looks definitely the most normal. Develop a piece with tempo. Could also maybe go bishop g4, but I'm less enthused about taking this because there'd be pressure here and here. I'm keeping an eye out for tactics, but I'm going to go knight c6. Looks good. And again, if d5, I have bishop takes c3 check. Pawn takes c3, queen takes c3 check. If queen d2, I pick up the rook on a1. So I think white, white should castle here. Maybe they'll play uh, queen e2, try to castle queen side, although that looks a little riskier because the king is left in the center for longer. So I think objectively castling king side now is, is the best move. And then what do I have to work with after, let's say, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, maybe queen f3 at that point. Hitting f7, also guarding c3. I can play queen f5, looking for a queen trade. I think that would be a decent idea. It looks like a marginal edge, but it's probably some sort of advantage for me there with the two bishops. Seems small, but could be relevant. And most importantly, I get the pawn back with no risk. So we'll cross that bridge if we get there. Anything else on castles I want to look at? I could take with the bishop on d4. It's actually interesting because knight takes d4. Maybe I take with the knight, and I try to prove that my knight is actually better than the bishop on that square. It's a little awkward for white's queen because I'm threatening discoveries. Also nice that my queen holds the rook on d8, so I'm pretty well coordinated there. I could go something like queen e1 maybe at that point. It's definitely somewhat awkward for white, though. In that line, too, I feel like I'm slightly better. Okay, white does castle. So decision time. Do I take d4, or do I even play a different move? Like this bishop g4 move. Don't really see how that helps me after h3. That seems unnecessary. So I will take on d4 here more than likely. Question is with which piece? So, yeah, on the one hand, taking with the knight preserves the bishop pair, but I do give white that f3 square at the end, which I do think white will play, white will make use of. I'm not afraid to play this ending by any means, but I'm assessing my winning chances there versus taking with the bishop and getting this position where the queens remain on board, but it looks a lot more awkward for white. I don't know if knight takes b3 is actually a threat there, strangely, though. Because a takes b3, I could take white's queen, but they're going to take my queen. But the mere fact that it looks awkward for white is appealing. That is an appealing aspect of this line. Like queen e1, maybe I go bishop f5, but then there's this weakness. Yeah, queen e1 might be a decent response. That's again in this line. Take, take. Could take of the rook, by the way, but eh, I'm just not feeling that as much. I'd rather have a minor piece posted in the center. 
Not seeing much against the Queeny one move. Looking at some wacky stuff there, like Bishop H3. <laughs> As if takes, there's a fork. I, I just don't buy it, though. It doesn't look like a, a quality move. Looks a little ticky-tack. A little superficial. Still paying attention to this, by the way. We can't lose sight of the F7 square. Potential weakness there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take with the knight. I think I've spent enough time pondering this position. We'll take with the knight. Anticipating the capture here. I'm going to pre-move this. I think it's fine. And I would expect the game to go uh, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, queen f3, queen f5. And then decision time for white. Do you want to trade queens? Do you want to keep queens on board with a move like queen g3? Queen g3, I'm considering maybe uh, bishop e5 or pawn e5. Probably bishop e5. I'll try to use that dark square bishop on the open board. If I ever have the opportunity for bishop takes c3, wrecking white's queenside structure, that may be on the table. I have a time edge here. This is 15 second increment, but nice to work with that time advantage. If I were playing white here, I don't think I'd consider much other than knight takes d4. I'd be surprised if some other move was played because everything else looks kind of awkward, so white does play it. And I think good chance white's going to move the queen. Queen e2 or queen f3. On queen e2, at minimum I can take here, although then maybe there's this move even. Might not even work, but... At minimum, I can play um, bishop takes c3 or queen e5. Queen e5 might be a good default move, too. Because that blocks queen takes e7. I'm again looking for a queen trade. Trying to grind out some edge in the endgame. I'll do my best Magnus impression. Trying to squeeze my opponent in the coming endgame if the queens come off the board. At the same time, the time edge that I'm building makes me want to complicate it if the position arises. So let's say the game goes queen f3, queen f5, queen g3. I would be pretty happy about that development because that gives me um, perhaps more chances to make the game complex when white's time could be ticking under five minutes. But the, the main reason I'd say this position is simplifying, it's... Partly due to the pieces coming off the board. But if you look at the pawn structure, there's no pawn tension, right? We both have majorities. I have a majority on the king side slash center with this e-pawn. White has a queen side majority, three versus two. And there's no clash between these pawns. So it's unlikely the pawns are going to play much of a role in the near term. So that makes the decisions a little easier. The board is kind of open. Uh... So white has to dodge tactics, but they don't have to consider pawn structure ramifications beyond like the bishop takes c3 stuff right now. All right, and white continuing to, to think here. Clock ticking down. So thinking on my opponent's time, queen f3. I do believe I'll play queen f5. And I'd like to say I would play bishop f5, but I see multiple issues with that. One, this pawn is hanging. Also, there's maybe g4. So, oh, okay, white surprises me. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. I did not consider this move. I immediately see the idea, take, take, take. And then here, seems like kind of a risky move to play, but I see their point. All right, so my bishop is under attack. 
Knight takes e7 is an idea too. But if I take here, knight takes e7. Remember, I have the queen defending the rook. So let's say bishop takes b2, knight takes e7 check, king f8. Ah, then white might go after f7, huh? So maybe then they play the queen f3 move. That could be the timing that white is looking for. Okay, all right. I see you. I got you. That's clever. Well, maybe bishop c5. But bishop c5 somehow doesn't seem quite right. Because my bishop is distracted from this diagonal. And I'm also just looking at this, just seeing if there's any tricks that I'm missing after c3. But the point is my bishop is pinned. Um, I would lose my queen. I don't think anything like bishop h3 is going to work there. Although it's interesting. Bishop takes f2 also not working. Yeah, not seeing much there. So if we set rook takes d5 aside, then I'm looking at either defending the bishop or moving it. Now there is e5 too, but e5, I think c3 is going to be awkward. e5, c3. Yeah, very clever move, knight d5. Escaped my attention. I saw that this was possible, but I didn't see the uh, possible pin coming in here with c3 at the end. Hmm. So queen c5, I think, runs into the c3 move. Because my rook will be undefended, so c3... Bishop moves, and then knight f6, and my rook gets scooped up. I could play bishop f6, take, take, and have the queen defend, but I don't like that resulting position. My pawns are doubled. Probably not the best. Yeah, this is a bit of an issue, definitely. This might change the evaluation of the position, because... Um, if I can't keep my bishop pair or keep the bishop on this diagonal, then what do I have to work with? I'm excited to win and... Oh, no. <laughs> I don't like seeing messages like that. <laughs> I hope these were two separate statements. <laughs> I also hope I'm not playing a 10-year-old with the 2013 in the uh, username. Careful, John. These kids are good at tactics. All right. Let's think. Oh, man. Oh, man. I stand corrected. Nine years old, not 10. Mm, let's see. So I have ways I can simplify, like bishop e6. But then bishop, bishop e6, knight takes e7. Doesn't look great. So I'm thinking I might need to go for the bishop f6 move as much as I would prefer not to. Hmm. What other moves could I reasonably play here? I don't want to spend too much time. But bishop takes b2, I think I've categorically ruled out. Because of knight takes e7, king f8. Uh, I could play... Wait a second. I could play king g7, right? Nah, it looks risky, though. Looks kind of risky in view of... Bishop takes b2 would be a principled move, though. Bishop takes b2. Knight takes e7. King g7, queen f3, and then what? Like, bishop f6 there? But knight takes c8 at the very least? Man, I don't know. There's this one too, bishop e6. But bishop e6, knight takes e7. King f8, what is going on there? Bishop takes e6, 
Bishop takes f2, check. Rook takes f2. Rook takes d1, take. That might be decent. Maybe I should play bishop e6. Maybe, maybe. That's the move. Bishop e6. Knight takes e7. King f8. Weird little situation. But then bishop takes e6. I can probably even play king takes e7 there. I think I will play this. And if queen takes d4, bishop takes d5. Could I get counterpinned with like queen e5 there? Man, queen e5 might be a good move at that point. Yikes. Bishop e6, queen takes d4, bishop takes d5, queen e5. Ugh. Hmm. Suddenly tough. And I really got to focus here because I'm getting low on the clock. Bishop takes b2, knight takes e7. King g7. And there's that queen f3 move again. Just an irritating move. Maybe I play rook f8 there, though. Could rook f8 be the move at that point? Man, I don't know. This is a tough decision, folks. I'm hemming and hawing here a lot, but I don't know about the evaluation of this. I'm going to play this. I might go down in flames, but we'll see. But remember, the queen does defend the rook, so we like that. But I think this whole idea has to be predicated on white seeing the whole queen f3 thing. For example, knight takes e7, king f8. I think queen f3 has to be the resource there. Otherwise, this doesn't really impress because white would have multiple things hanging. Maybe they could sack the exchange on a1 as part of the plan. But I think on knight takes e7, I should go king g7. All that said, I may still run into the whole uh, queen f3 business. All right, these, these moments are tough in games, guys. Like, I was blindsided by knight d5. Um, I already missed bishop takes c7 earlier in the game, so I'm trying to remind myself that I still have to continue making good decisions on every move. And not to despair, but psychologically, these moments are challenging, for sure. Next, my king is going to get opened up here. Already is open. Okay, let's go here. So hitting the queen, rook's under attack, but I don't think I'm going to get an opportunity to take the rook anytime soon because queen f3, hit this. Still trying to figure out what to do there. Um, candidate moves, bishop f6, maybe bishop f5. Maybe f5. f5 is pretty loosening, though. I'd love to keep the uh, f pawn where, where it's at. Tricky, tricky, but at least it's white's move and not mine. But I think queen f3 is coming. I hesitate to say that there's no other move, though, because 
White already demonstrated with knight d5 that that's not the case. <laughs> I thought queen f3 was coming there. I could play bishop e6 against this, but I don't like that on bishop takes e6, f takes e6, there's this queen takes b7 move. Threatening double checks, potentially, like knight f5. Maybe I could go rook b8 there and try my luck. Like knight f5. Yep, there's queen f3. Okay, so... <clears throat> Bishop f5 is possible for sure here. Uh, Bishop f6 may be safest. I, I think I forfeited any chance at an advantage, though, if something like this occurs. But at least on queen takes b7 there, there's a little trap rook c7, and then I could take the rook on a1. So maybe I should play bishop f6. Might be the most responsible thing to do. Bishop f6, rook e1, though. Rook a to e1. I'm worried about. But I think it's more important to just play fast. I, I don't think I can do this. I mean, me? Well, hmm. Looks awfully scary. Looks awfully scary. But let's say king h8. Am I actually losing there? Because I am guarding the dark squares, to be fair. Let's say rook takes a1, queen e5. Bring, bring the queen over to assist. Man, that might actually be playable. This is dangerous with 2 minutes 40 seconds left, but maybe I could do that. Here, here, here. There's no smothered mates, are there? Don't think so. Queen e5. Hmm. Could that be the salvation move? Queen e5, let's say, I don't know, rook f1, then like bishop f5 or something. Somewhat playing with fire on an open board, but that might be the move. Sharp position. Sharp, disorienting. I think I'm going to take a risk here, guys. Because I got to get White thinking about this position somehow and like stop the momentum. I need a trend breaking move, you know? Something to try to uh, reverse the game a little bit. So here, here. And white immediately took here, so they seem confident. But is this actually good for white? Now, there's also a back rank weakness for white, too. So, like, rook takes a1. I'm staring at two back rank squares, but the rook does cover. So I'm thinking queen e5. There's also queen c3. But I imagine queen e5, usually better to centralize your queen in these situations for defensive purposes. So I do think white will take. And queen e5, rook f1. And then what? Bishop f5, maybe. Or bishop g4. Imperative, I keep my queen guarding. Ah, there's also queen e7. Okay, queen e7 is probably what I should do. Rook takes a1, queen e5, rook f1, queen e7. Uh-huh. Important move, because my king is open. I'd love to trade queens. I'm actually up a point of material in that position. Uh, queen g7. Sorry, I think I said queen e7. Queen g7. And I'm looking at that knight on e7. Sometimes I say the square of the piece that I want to attack, or I'm striving to attack. Okay, that could be a key defensive idea. And my bishop controls e6, so I think white would be forced to acquiesce to a queen trade there. Yeah. Let's play this move now. Play it quick. And it's huge that this is a mate threat and hits the undefended rook, so I'm doing this with a gain of time. I hope I'm not missing something here, but 
I think I've got the kingside situation under control. So remember, I just traded my bishop, that guardian of the dark squares. Otherwise, queen f6 would be mating. And I have to plug those dark square weaknesses immediately by putting the queen on this same diagonal. And I'm doing so with tempo. Yeah, queen g7 is a nice defensive move. So I'm feeling more relaxed now. But still a lot can happen here, and we're approaching bullet time. So we're not letting our guard down whatsoever. But when you see a move like this, your heart rate goes down a little bit, and <laughs> you start to get more optimistic. Okay, queen, uh, rook f1. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to play anything else. No, no, rook d7 runs into this, so very important to keep this square guarded. I don't see really any problems with this. Let's do it. Pre-move the queen capture. Or the queen trade. Yeah, if I don't do this move, it's going to be hard to coordinate, and I might lose the b7 pawn. There wasn't like a clearly good square to put my light square bishop. Maybe I could have gone bishop d7, actually, and then rook f8. But under the circumstances, this move feels correct, for sure. Helps guard g6 as well, so don't need to worry about a sacrifice there as much. Okay, we get the trade. And now we'll try to win this position up just a small amount of material, but an important amount of material. Okay, knight comes back. So maybe playing with the idea of knight c7. So bishop e6, knight here, I imagine. I could go to f5, though. Also play like rook b8. Bishop d7 also looks pretty reasonable. Maybe bishop d7 is good here. Bishop d7, knight c7 here. Bishop d7, rook here. Rook e8 is looking nice. Rook e8. Okay, does have rook d1 then. Hmm. <clears throat> There's also bishop f5, because bishop f5 might threaten this bishop takes c2 move, so maybe I should do that instead. Yeah, just debating where to put this bishop. Let's go bishop f5. Looks a little more active. Okay, well, it's going to be under 30 seconds here. Rook e1. Could I play this now? That knight c7 move, I don't think it's the right time to get creative here. I can maybe play bishop takes. Rook takes, and then bishop takes a2. But I think it's simpler to just play something like this in this position. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to go for the pin. So if here, we'll do this. Just trying to get this last rook in the game. All right, knight retreats. Understandable. Now, this is a threat. Somewhat damages my pawns, but I'm thinking I might be able to justify like bringing a rook over if I want. Um, I don't know. Bishop e4 looks pretty normal here too. Don't have a whole ton of time to decide. 
I think I'll go with one of the more active moves in this position. Yeah, I'll play Rook D8. Slightly, slightly damage my structure, but I'm not worried about that. I think I'd rather uh, get the knight off the board and seize the files. So if white wants to allow that, then they can do so. Okay, now I may move the bishop, maybe like a bishop c8 type move or something. This pawn is weak, but how to attack it? Can't easily attack it yet. Bishop e4, f3. Uh, maybe it can come back to c6 in that way. That's interesting. Yeah, let's go here. Now, I'm getting down on the clock, too, but we have the 15-second increment. The tactics are manageable in this position, but uh, with a knight, we can never fully relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go here. And now I'm thinking do this or this, because the bishop guarding this is pretty handy. So if king f2, I think this is looking good. Probably wins a pawn, because how do you deal with this and this? Or no, I guess it won't win a pawn. There's c4. But getting them, getting them to play c4 seems pretty useful. Goes knight c2. Okay. Thinking rook d3 here. Um, could also, of course, take and play rook d2. But I like the look of rook d3. Yeah, let's play that. Hmm. Yeah, and I don't see an issue with taking the pawn here. Just double checking. There's knight e6, king f6, knight f8, h5 or something. You just can never relax when there's a knight on board, as we know. As we are well aware. I could also play bishop d7 here. I want to try to defend, but I think I'm going to take the pawn. Yeah, let's go take that. Knight e6, king here. Let's say knight f4, maybe uh, maybe bishop c6 at that point. I think I will go forward with the king. Let's do it. Okay, so this should be a technically winning position. Just got to neutralize their threats. Knight f4. Now watch the fork. Absolutely watch the fork. Bishop f7 might be a good clinical move here. Guards d5. Steps out of the future fork. Yeah, let's do this. Maybe white will play knight e2 because that does cover some of these squares. Okay, they trade. Obviously, we're going to take. <clears throat> Let's start pushing these pawns now. King f2, give a check. Force white to stay tied down to the g3 pawn, or g2 pawn, rather. Yeah, give the check. Useful move. Just annoying for white to get pulled in that direction. And now I think we simply go make a pass pawn on this side of the board. So we'll play a5. Mm -hmm. Probably a4 now. Keep pawns on uh, light squares. Restrict white. 
takes away the b3 square. White maybe making way for the g pawn, but let's play b4. And now I'm even at a point where I can probably play rook takes a2 if I want. And then just win with the pawns. Might be the best way to do this because rook takes a2, um, bishop takes b3, bishop here, a3. It's pretty simple. I could also play b3 takes and then run the pawn. a3 I think is winning too. I kind of like rook takes a2 though. Nice tidy way to win this. Let's do it. There's a check, of course, too, but the check doesn't do anything, so. White's king way too far away to assist in anything. We're going to stay off the light squares just to be safe, like g5, king g7. It is too much. And you can see the effect of the pawns advancing on the same color as white's bishop. That's an instructive aspect of this. I'm not playing b2 next, of course. Not advancing those pawns on dark squares. We're advancing them on light squares. Yeah. King e5, I think, is winning here. No problem. Let's just play king e5. But king e5 or king g7, both fine. Push here. Tough game. Tough game. Because that knight d5 move really blindsided me. I did not consider that move seriously. I did see it initially. I, I can't recall if I mentioned it, but I did see it. But I got lazy with my calculation. I just assumed it would lose material, but it actually introduces this alignment issue on the file that um was tough to defend against. And I'm going to be really curious if the engine actually approves of what I did. Okay. Thank you for the game to my opponent. That was a well-played game. And um, yeah, especially if they're that young, I mean, very promising future ahead of them. This is the internet, so you never know. Um, but yeah, kudos to my opponent for a very well-fought game. So... I think the opening went in my favor. Uh, the bishop on c4 allowing this knight takes e4 idea. This is known to be fine for black, but again, I didn't fully calculate the ramifications of this. I should have looked at bishop takes c7, even if it doesn't turn out to be good. Yeah, it does indeed look like this is good for um, black. Yeah, Frozen Cloud like this game. <laughs> Okay, so this is all fine. Got rook d8 here. Knight c6. Okay, it approves of all this. I'm doing a bit of an abbreviated analysis. By the way, um, I will have to run fairly soon. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so I was debating between knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Wasn't really considering bishop g4 that closely. It's interesting that the... Engine gives this as the top move. I always thought I always thought h3, and I didn't want to take here because of the threat on f7. But it does point out I have this in-between move, rook takes d4. Thank you, Conjol Train. Yeah, rook takes d4. Interesting. Hmm. So as played, I mean, this, this is decent. Let's compare it to bishop takes d4. Yeah, in hindsight, I kind of wish I had this position because I would have had to burn a lot less time <laughs> trying to figure out what to do, but I couldn't figure out how to create an edge against this move queen e1. Queen e1 seemed problematic. Threatening e7 and just steps out of the way of all of my discoveries. It's, it's a tiny bit better for black, but I don't know. Knight takes d4. We'll compare it to this line. And let's see knight d5. I mean, it's, it's a very creative move. Queen f3 is the top move. Likes queen moves for four of the, of the top five moves here. 
I generally like to have five moves selected when I'm analyzing. But I mean, I really give my opponent credit for this move because even if the engine says this is dubious, this was this was tough. I had to walk a tight rope here. Bishop takes b2, which does appear to be the best move. So I went into the tank at this point. So my opponent has five and a half minutes here. I have um, 11 minutes, 41 seconds. I spent, yeah, more than half my remaining time on bishop takes b2. Not happy about that from a time management perspective, of course, but I do think it was um, at least somewhat warranted. This is a critical moment. If I misstep here, I could easily be worse. Bishop c5 is the next best move. I really hated to play this move. Yeah, I wanted to keep my bishop here. This just looks like a loose move to me. Queen f3. I guess I'm covering with bishop e6. Man, looks... Looks a little shaky, but in view of the bishop coming here, that probably does hold. So let's see. Bishop takes b2. Okay, now rook b1. I didn't actually consider rook b1 in this position. I thought for sure white would take on e7, as white did. So it does look like I have options here. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, so th this was my bailout move, but I, I realized that after this takes, there's this really annoying queen e5 move, which is the top move. Doesn't appear to be that bad for black, but I have to be precise. Queen b5, wow. That's a specific move because it looks like I'm trying to capitalize on the alignment here. But when white plays queen e5, they, they, they're trying to capitalize on this alignment, this pin of my bishop along the fifth rank. Like, pretty weird. White's threatening c4, and that's where queen b5 comes in. I mean, that's, that's a tough move because it looks like it almost encourages c4, but then I take and I defend the queen. And otherwise, I'm looking to play this. And I guess this is no good for some reason, or at least I have play against this. Yeah, but I have to play a pawn down here. Apparently, I have enough compensation, but I, I wasn't willing to make that determination after seeing queen e5. Okay, so it does look like bishop takes b2 is correct here. Uh, yeah, and interesting. I mean, white played the way I thought they would play. Queen f3. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my calculation at this point. Uh, I'm happy that I had the wherewithal to realize that although white has taken over the initiative the past few moves, there's actually some concrete issues that are working in my favor, like the efficacy of this bishop takes a1 move. That's super important. I mean, originally I wasn't intending that at all. I was looking at bishop f5, bishop f6. Looks like bishop f6 is holding. It just didn't feel like the move you want to play here, though, because I'm pinned. Um, this bishop is always going to be kind of stuck there because of the queen takes f7 idea. So the real way to try to call this bluff or semi-bluff that white's doing is to take on a1, which you have to be willing to allow this. But indeed, after king h8, it seems like I'm fine. More than fine. Engine says I'm winning here. Yeah, so getting the queen back in proximity to the king was uh, critical in this one. Absolutely critical to my defensive task because, yeah, no other move is nearly as good as bishop takes a1. Bishop takes a1 is best by a country mile. There's also bishop e6. Yeah, I did mention this too. There were some issues I didn't like with this, but it might be smoke and mirrors. Like knight f5 might not actually even work. I think I mentioned this line. It's probably here I step up to, um, I don't even have to step to f6. Actually, I can come back here. Yeah, and again, the bishop controls g7. These are some, some difficult variations with limited time, though, involving some trickiness. Ah, okay, there's rook b1 here, though. That could be a problem. Yeah, save the rook and attack here. So all in all, I, I'm glad that I reconsidered my options at this point. I actually spent half of my remaining time here, too. So going from four minutes to two minutes. But this was time well spent. Remember, the more tactically complex the position, the more you have to spend your time. You know, and you and if you are not making those adjustments in game, then probably you're making some some rash decisions and compromising your safety. Because to me, like this decision here, ideally I would have seen ninety five, the effects of ninety five. And again, the reason I didn't go for this, this is what I missed, is that white has C three here. Pinning my bishop, attacking the pin bishop, and I lose material. So that's the whole crux of like why knight d5 is playable. But it was imperative that I spend time figuring out how to neutralize this. And I, I'm really glad I, 
I did invest those two minutes at this point because this is probably the decision that won me the game. So, yeah, queen takes f7. White played that right away. I mean, rook takes a1 could maybe be played, but it probably transposes. Yeah, and I think queen takes f7 is pretty natural, so makes sense that White did it. Yeah, queen c3 or queen e5 both work. You can actually see they transpose in this line. Uh, white played rook f1. It's just really nice that white can't bring their rook to the center. Um, if their back rank issue was solved, maybe they could sack the rook in some way. Like a knight takes g6 operation probably wouldn't even work. But you know, I did have to think about stuff like this. But I knew especially this wouldn't work when queen takes a1 was always on the table for me if ever I get a free move. So rook f1. I played queen g7. We traded queens. Yeah, and that's forced. I don't see any other decent move for white. Um, they have to allow a queen trade, basically, in some capacity. Because if you bring the queen back here, then you lose the uh, knight on e7. And my king is safe enough. If check, I can block. And we're all good. So, yeah, it's, it's a technical task after this. Let's just quickly take a look at my technique. I had to respect the knight c7 move. Looks like I made some solid decisions, though. Rook a d8. Yep, c3, bishop e4. Just the piece that I'm, I'm zeroing in on here is the knight. The piece that historically I've blundered the most against, especially in low time, time pressure situations. Okay, it doesn't like rook d3 as much, but that's a very minor difference. I'm not going to sweat going from minus 6 to minus 5. I think it's fine. It's suggesting rook b1 here. Okay, that gives up the pawn. Still winning for black. Yep, just avoiding forks, being cognizant of where we might get forks. Trying to trade down. I want to win with my queenside majority now. And once I got that knight off the board, you know, pretty straightforward task here. Many ways to win this position. I didn't have to sacrifice the rook. Could play like this. And then a3, a2. Force white to give up the bishop. Um, could play even this first. And then something like uh, like this, run a little interference. That's pretty clean as well. But this seems straightforward enough. And also got, we got to show the power of having the pawns connected on the same color as the enemy bishop in doing this. And g5 check doesn't change anything at any point. So make a queen and win the game. Okay, yeah, real, real tough one. Um, thanks again to my opponent. Uh, especially for being nine years old. Again, this is the internet, so you never know. Um, and I'm trying to be sensitive to this young person's age. But mainly, therefore, I want to say amazing, amazing game, Ishan. Um, I hope you watch this. You really pushed me to the limit. You have a bright future in chess. I really hope you stick with it. And I think you're doing your tactics trainer because you saw a lot there. I saw with the knight d5 move that you were seeing quite a bit in the position. and. Um, you created a lot of problems for this international master today. So um, best wishes for your chess improvement. Okay, uh, just looking at the percentages before we wrap here. Yeah, it looks like I played a pretty accurate game, 97%. Only inaccuracy I got was rook d3. That was late in the game when the eval wasn't, wasn't budging much. And also for my opponent, for this rating, 1800 classical, I think they played excellently. A couple sketchy decisions in the opening, but then again, I was kind of disoriented too. Wasn't sure I was making them correctly in the moment. So really fun game. I enjoyed that and my heart rate got up a little bit. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll see you guys again soon with another video. Bye guys.